Well, hello there, Sister Lasagna. Welcome back to Balaku Ministries. How are you on today? I am so wonderful. Thank you for asking. Oh, you're so welcome. Well, what a pleasure it is to be back with you on another great in-depth Bible study that we're going to be doing here on today. And this week, we are already on episode number 41. Wow, we only got one more Thank episode you. to go. Can you believe it? <laughs> mm, no. Uh, no, we can't, can we? Well, everyone, as you know, we're Bible lovers, achieving Christ's knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. And we've been doing a great series this year where we've been talking about couples in our mm -hmm. Bible. And we've been looking at uh, various couples. And this week, oh, we got another good one. We're going to be looking at the couple called Oil and Anointed or anointing uh, that family that we're looking at, that couple we're going to be looking at here today. But everyone, before we get into the study, as we always do, we want to have Sister Lasagna to graciously, humbly open us up in prayer. We'll get going. Thank you. You're welcome. Heavenly Father, we just come to you on this gorgeous day, Lord Jesus. We're just asking you to anoint us, Lord Jesus, under the sound of your voice, so we may hear what your will is, Lord Father. We just love you. We just honor you, and we pray for you. We just have so much to be thankful for, Lord Jesus. You sent sacrifices, and you asked us. You, you, you're trying to let us back into the, your presence, Lord Jesus. And I read all about it, Lord Jesus. And I want to be wherever you are. We just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, as we get into your lesson, we just ask that you and your son and the Holy Spirit just come into our lesson today, Lord, and anoint us and give us all that you would have us to give. Studying you, Lord Jesus, and your will for us so we can honor you and praise you and give you all the praise, Lord Jesus. We love you so, so very much. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Oh, amen and amen. Thank you so much, Sister Lasagna. As we say, open what? In prayer. Because uh, being opening mm. up in prayer is like a store opening up for business. You know, when you have a business, right. you got to, come on now, you got to open up, don't you? You got to turn that sign around and You're say, we're well, open. And that's what this Bible study is doing. We got to open up in prayer. So God bless you for that. Thank you so Amen. much. Amen. Amen. Well, yeah. everyone, as we said, we're doing this lesson this week and we're talking about the couple oil and anointed. And so Sister Lasagna, we're going to start here. We're going to ask you, what do you know about this couple? And tell us, is it usual or unusual? So let's start with the uh, oil. What is the oil? How would you describe that? Well, in doing my research, I wrote, if the oil in the Bible is not specifically named, then it's likely in reference to the Holy Spirit, especially anointing oneself with oil. Christians have the Spirit who leads us into all truth and anoints us continually with his grace and comfort. Ooh, I like that. That's very good, Sister Lasagna. I like the, the twist that you put on that with the oil. You symbolize it with the Holy Spirit, didn't you? Wow, I Amen. like that. That's good. Okay, so now tell us about the anointed. What does that mean to you? The anointing? Because we're going to see words like anointed or anointing or anoint. It all means the same. What does it mean to you? The act of anointing or being anointed is being smeared or rub with oil as a part of a religious ceremony to make someone or something sacred. To be anointed is to be set apart, empowered, or protected. In 2 Kings 9.16 and Genesis 28.18 is set apart. In 2 Corinthians 1, 
verses 21 and 22 is empowering people. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 21 and 22, is protection over the sick, James 5 and 14, Acts 10, 38, says, And you know God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. While many could be anointed, Jesus is the Messiah, the ultimate anointed one. Ooh, my, that is Sister Lasagna. Look at here. You did some digging, did you? You did some great research. Look at all of the nuggets and the information that you were able to describe for this word anointing. I like how you started off. You said uh, something that needs that smeared or rubbed, uh, uh, you know, for ceremonial purposes. So some really good things there. So now that you got the oil, and you got the anointing process. Do you say these two go together? Are they usual or unusual? Definitely usual. They, they go together. Yes, they do, don't they? Because just take a look at the yes. images that we have here. These are the images that's going to be used today. So you can see for the oil, we got oil, don't we? And notice that this yes. ain't just no any kind of oil. This ain't your chicken oil. This ain't the kind of oil you fry your chicken in. This ain't vegetable oil. It ain't canola oil. It ain't soybean oil. This is a special oil, and it got to be made from the what? Olive. So that's yeah. olive oil. When you go to church and the preachers want to anoint you, they ain't using no Crisco oil. They going to go get some virgin <laughs> olive oil, aren't they? That's what they use. That's what was used in the biblical days. Okay, so look at the other image. We got an image of someone being anointed, don't we? Look at the uh, the religious uh, per people here, the priests. And isn't that what you said? It's used for the ceremonial so that's what's happening in this image. So you got the oil that needs to be rubbed or smeared on the individual. And we're going to see that it also is used on things as well. So now with that being said, we got our images. We know what we're looking at. We know what we're looking for in the scriptures. The key words is going to be oil and anointed or anointing or anoint. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see. What's going on in the scriptures? Is 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 this oil and anointing? Is it being used usual or is it unusual? Okay, mm. all oh. right then. Oh. Let's take a look. Okay, let's take a look at our very first scripture, and let's head over to Exodus, Exodus chapter twenty-five. Okay. Okay. I want you to read verse. Um. One and two, and then I want you to drop down to three. One and two, and then uh, oh. one, two, and then six. One, two, and six. Mm -hmm. One, two, and six. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay, then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, Israel, that they bring me an offering from everyone who gives it willingly with his heart. You shall take my offering. And verse 6, all for the light and the spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense. Mm-hmm. Right. So I put, God was giving instructions to Moses mm -hmm. for the children of Israel, giving from the heart. Mm -hmm. He tells Moses they could give oil for the light and spices for the anointing oil and for sweet incense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here we have God now. This is God talking to Moses and telling Moses what he wants the people to bring. So when they build that tabernacle, remember, this is all stuff that's going to be used in the tabernacle that they're going to be building later on. And so God is saying, OK, Moses, now go to my people and tell them this is what I want them to bring. And did you notice he put this cup? He uh, put that oil in there, didn't he? 
And did you notice when yes. he said how to use the oil? He says it's two ways. Did you notice in verse six, it says you're going to bring the oil for the what? Light. Because see, right. olive oil wasn't just used for anointing. Olive oil was used to put in the lamps. So when they wanted light in the house or when they going out in the dark, they had light oil in their lamps, like the wise and the foolish virgins. Remember that uh, parable with the wise, the ten uh, virgins. Uh, five brought extra oil, and the and the foolish virgins didn't bring no oil because you need oil for right. light. Okay, and then right. the, another purpose of the oil. Did you notice in the text they say, okay, now get these spices together because we're gonna need some spices to make what some anointing oil. Ooh, <laughs> so this anointing oil, it ain't your regular, it ain't your regular kind of oil. When the when they make it up, God gave them a, a recipe. They had a recipe. Certain things yes. had to go into this anointing oil. Are you seeing this? Yes. So there it is right there. This couple has a purpose. Oil and anointing. It has a purpose, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there it is. Here's an introduction right in the wilderness. And they're in the wilderness. And we're seeing how this couple, right. God, put it together. Well, let's take a look and let's see uh, how this couple is still together. And is are they being used in a usual way or are they being used in an unusual way? Unusual way. Let's take a look at our uh, second scripture. Let's go to Leviticus chapter eight. Okay, Leviticus eight. Mm -hmm. All uh, right, and I want you to read. Uh, I know I had it on our schedule, uh, verse two, but I, I changed it. I want you to read this. Read verse six, and then I want you to do 10, 11, and 12, okay? Okay. Okay. Verse six, 10, 11, and 12. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it reads, Then Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water and he put 6 10 11 yeah also Moses took the anointed oil and the anointed anointed the tabernacle and all that was in it and consecrated them he sprinkled some of it on the altar seven times anointed the altar and all its utensils and the labor and his base to consecrate them. And he poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head and anointed him to consecrate him. Mm. Okay, so that's 10, 11, and 12. Mm -hmm. The Lord instructed Moses to consecrate Aaron and his sons with the anointed oil for his journey. He sprinkled the altar seven times. He was anointed from his head to his toe as to prepare him for his journey. Ooh. That's what I got out of that. Okay. So what you just got out of that, do you say what happened, what God was doing, telling Moses to do for Aaron? Was it usual or unusual? It was usual. It was, wasn't it? Yeah, because see yes. now, see now, did you notice this scripture now is showing that that tabernacle is built. Remember the first scripture that we had? God was instructing Moses to tell them what they was going to do when the tabernacle was constructed. Now it's done. See, they done made the oil. So now they got that oil sitting there waiting to be what used. Now we see that it's being yes. used, the purpose. And did you notice in the text that this oil, this anointing oil, it wasn't just used on humans, on Aaron and his sons, because see, they were the priests. They were, they were the ones that had the anointing oil on them was the priests, as you can see in the image we had today. Let me go back to the image that we use. See that image? Look what he's doing with the oil. He's putting it on his head, just like the scripture said, isn't it? OK, mm -hmm. well, uh, also, not only did he put it on the on the person, but you notice what the text said. He had to sprinkle it on the what altar. 
He had to put it on the altar. He put it on all the utensils, whatever spoons and knives and forks, whatever they use in that tabernacle. Everything had to have that anointing. Everything had to be anointed because this is God's. Yes. Oh, come on. Are you seeing this? This is God's yes, uh, tabernacle. This is God's house. So when you come in God's house, everything got to be consecrated, even the cups and the yes. plates. Baby, when you drink out of that cup, yeah. you know that cup been anointed. Come on now. You know that plate been anointed. Amen. The altar Amen. is anointed. Are you seeing this? Even the base, the foot right. of the altar is anointed. And then at the end, in verse 12, then he says, okay, now I want you to anoint who? Aaron. Put the oil on his head, Amen. just like we see in the image that we have here today. Wow. <laughs> Look yeah. at that. So Aaron and his sons came out of the tribe of Levi, which represents the priestly line, and they were the ones that were anointed. Yes. Anointed. Praise God. All right, then anything you want to uh, add that you may see in this scripture as well? I now know what the all is that preachers in the churches be using. Whereas before I had no idea why they would anoint him. I didn't realize they were trying to consecrate them, set them apart from what's going on in the world, what they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. They were being consecrated for the Lord. Mm -hmm. See, I, I learned a lot reading this scripture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad that I finally know because now I know I need to get some oil every time. <laughs> every time they giving it out, <laughs> I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be sitting in my seat. I should be up there getting me some oil. Yes, yes, yes. So, and, and and you know I, you. I, I know. Oh, go I'm ahead. sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. no go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, no, I just want to say. Um, and you know one thing. Uh, you know uh, when I uh, uh, got ready for the show today. And, you know, and I'm getting dressed. I anointed myself because I love olive oil because my mm -hmm. my honey, uh, mm -hmm. they have a they have a, a olive oil. Uh, they have an olive tree orchard. And so, girl, they give me they give me the real olive oil. And I got his sister gave me a big old gallon of it. So I got this the best olive oil. So, girl, after I get ready, when I get ready, I anoint my whole body in olive oil. Mm -hmm. and my skin is so smooth. My, you know, my my body is glowing my whole and i'm yeah. soft i'm soft because i've been consecrated <laughs> oh, i got to get ready to well teach. i'm switching oils yeah <laughs> oh. Woo, that's right and it ain't crystal oil baby it's olive yeah. oil okay don't get the vegetable okay. oil <laughs> i love it so i i, love I, I learned something today honey exactly Anoint yourself. You ain't got to wait to let no man. You can anoint yourself. All right, then. Yeah. Let's take a look at our next scripture, Sister Lasagna. Everyone, as you can see on the screen, we're going to go to our third scripture. Let's take a look at Numbers. Numbers chapter four. And we're going to have Sister yeah. Lasagna read verse 16. Numbers 4, 16, please. Okay. And it reads, mm -hmm. the appointed duty of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest is the oil for the light. The sweet incense, the daily grain offering, the anointed oil, the oversight of all the tabernacle, of all that is in it with the sanctuary and its furnishings. And that's what you talked about. Everything had to be anointed. The mm -hmm. furniture, the utensils, everything. Mm -hmm. This it this this is the concerns of the duties of the Levite family and clan. The chapter is about jobs performed by the Levites for the house of Aaron in the tabernacle. It began as God commanded Moses and Aaron to number the three sons of the Levi, appointed duty of Elijah, the son of Aaron, the priest, is the oil for the light anointing oil, 
and oversight of all the tabernacle so they may live and not die when they approach the holy things of the the Lord, the holy things of the tabernacle of the Lord. This referred to them taking a census 30 years and above to 50 years. This was a, a census being taken mm-hmm. and God instructed them on how what they should do to to prepare this. So I learned a lot, stuff mm-hmm. I didn't know mm-hmm. that I was, you know, just speculate. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't no speculation today. <laughs> I love it. Because you've you been anointed. That. Yes. Yes. See, see, not only or we can be anointed in the physical, but the best anointing is when you're anointed in the spirit. When God has spoken yeah. to you and called you because he set you apart to do certain things. You know, I see uh, mm-hmm. like this ministry, Black Coup, it's is, is been anointed in the spirit to teach the way that we do. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you see what I'm saying? There's no other teaching I out there it. like this. Not, not like this. No, it's not. Uh, it's not that I know of. Uh, me either. <laughs> and if there's anyone watching and y'all do what we do, please let me know. Because I know you've been uh, consecrated. Okay. But here it is, though, Sister right. Lasagna. Again, like you just stated there. So this couple in this text is acting usual. Because now yeah. we're seeing that Aaron's sons is doing exactly what Aaron had to do when he was the priest. Mm-hmm. Now it's the sons. And you said it correctly. Even the text says it. Let's go uh, uh, back here to the scripture. So it says what? The appointed what? Duty. So these, Duty. these yeah. priests, this was their duty to take care of the anointing oil. They had to, uh, they knew the recipe. They were the only one who had the recipe. They had to make it up, you know, so they can get ready for the ceremony. God likes ceremonies. Yes. Come on now. So when he God does. has the ceremonies, the Passover, the Feast of Tabernacles, you know, uh, and all the other uh, festivals that they do throughout uh, 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 Hebrew history, you, there's a duty. Somebody is doing it. Somebody got to prepare the anointing oil. Yeah. Are you seeing this? So this is yes, usual. I am. Yeah, this is yes. usual. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's take a look at our next scripture. Okay. And uh, now we're going to head down to the New Testament. Now we've been hanging out in the old. And so we're going to see if the New Testament still have this couple together. Are they still together? And are they uh, uh, whatever they doing in the New Testament, is it usual or is it unusual? We got a surprise today. All right, then take a look. Hebrews chapter one. And this is what I want you to read. Uh, verse five and then eight and nine. Hebrews one, mm-hmm. verse five, eight and nine. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. That wasn't on the schedule. Mm. Well, you know what? <clears throat> I apologize for that. I, Minister Love, switched it up on you, didn't I? I am so sorry. Let's go there anyway, and I'll do this one. I would, I would do this one, okay? Let's go to Hebrews chapter one. Let me know when you're there. I'm there. Okay, take a look. Now, again, the key words we're looking for is oil and anointed. Let's take a look. For to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. So let me just stop right there. So here the writer is talking about uh, the angels, and he said, did God ever tell any of the angels that you're my son? That's what he said in that text. Mm. Go down to verse 8. Oh, but to the son, so we know who the son is, who? Jesus Christ, right? So he mm. says, but to the son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness 
is the scepter of your kingdom. Didn't we talk about this in that lesson, that couple we had about thrones and kingdom? I think that was uh, lesson number 39, I believe. So we talked about this uh, couple already. So take a look at verse nine. Here it is. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. This is awesome because mm -hmm. the writer is now letting us know the son, that's Jesus. Notice that the writer is saying, God anointed Jesus. Why? He anointed him with what? Oil of what? Oil. Gladness. Remember what I said yeah. earlier? This oil don't have to be physical. It don't have to be your physical olive oil. You can have a spiritual anointing. And here it is yeah. that God anointed his own son. Uh, he anointed him with the oil of what? Gladness. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus came down and got up on that cross, he did it with what? G gladness. He had to do it for the yeah. redemption. He was glad to save Lasagna and Carol and those of you that accepted him as your Lord and Savior. He did it with gladness to take the nails in his hands and in his feet. He did it with glad because he was anointed with yeah. gladness from his own father. Wow. Whoever. Now, we're used to the physical oil, but I never seen the spiritual oil. Gladness. Amen. Yeah. You ever come around people, you know, I use myself as an example. When I go out and I go into places right away, it's as if I got a whole bottle, bottle of olive oil over my body and I'm just walking in mm -hmm. shining and glowing and people are saying, oh man, who are you? Where do you come from? What's your name? What do you do? Mm -hmm. And they're glad. Mm -hmm. It's like some people, they got a frown on their face, but when I walk in, it's like, it's like I'm giving a all of gladness. Uh, smiling. Yeah. See, your smile indicates what kind of anointing you got. If you got a yeah. smile that can light up a room, girl, you've been anointed. People gravitate mm -hmm. to you because of your gladness. You're not uh, you're not negative. You're not uh, combative. You know, when, when people hear you and know your reputation, she, she she's always in a good mood. He is mm -hmm. always in a good mood. More than more than not, I would say, you know, 80 or 90 percent, you more happier than you negative. Are you saying this? Right. It's there your you, aura. There you go. That's that anointing. You've been anointed. Mm. Yes. See, uh, it's like before we started the show, you and I had a little pre-show talk. And I said, oh, Sister Lisa, you look so, what did I say? You look so bright, girl. You look good. Uh, uh, did yes. you go, yeah, did you work? What you do? Shining. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Read you, the even, Bible. you even cut your hand. You bleeding, but you still, you still, you still shine. It, it, it's like, it's like, you don't let nothing touch you. All the evil words, the <laughs> evilness and all this other stuff. You just remain calm and just do what you need to do. <laughs> That's whatever right. is right. Exactly. Because you got that spiritual yeah. anointing. I don't need to go to no church for no man that slap no oil on my head. I can anoint myself. For God can anoint me Amen. with the oil of glass. That's right. If he could do Amen. it for his son, if he could do it for his son, he could do it for Lasagna, he could do it for Minister Love, and he can do it for you too, audience. He can That's anoint right. you with the oil of gladness. Oh, Woo! Glad. That was good, wasn't it? Yes, it is. I love it. I'm telling you, I'm <laughs> loving this couple. I'm loving this couple. All right, then, Sister Lasagna, let's take a look at another scripture, okay? Everyone, we're going to now go to the book of Mark. Take a look. Mark chapter 14. Okay. And Sister Lasagna, okay. I want you to read, I want you to read verse three. And then I want you to go down to verse six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay. Okay. All right. And it reads, and being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came having an alabaster flag of a very costly oral of spikenard, spikenard, mm -hmm. 
Then she broke the flask and poured it on his head. Mm-hmm. And six, but Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me, for you have the poor with you always, and whenever you wish, you may do them good. But me, you do not have always. She has done what she could. She has be- beforehand anointed my body for burial. And nine reads, assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is, preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial for to her. <laughs> That's good. Ain't that good? Ain't that good? That's mm. good. Yes. Now, now, I read that, but this time I got to read it from a different mindset. Mm-hmm. I understood what was going on during this time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I put the Jews, Jews plotted Judas' treachery to take Jesus and put him to death, but not during the Passover, the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. Being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, the woman having costly oil and poured it on Jesus' head to annoy him for his burial. And he was real glad. He told him, leave this woman alone. She's doing a good deed. They didn't even know a good deed when they saw it, but she did. Mm-hmm. And she, you know, mm-hmm. she she said, it doesn't matter how much it costs or what you want to do. This is for my savior. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to put it on him. And mm-hmm. I thank you for that. Yes. yes. Yes, yes, look at that. So here is this couple all the way back, uh, uh, still here in the what? New Testament and doing what it did yes. in the Old Testament. There was it's still this anointing, still this ceremony. The Passover is getting ready to come up. Like you said, I'm so glad you brought that up as well. And so, and so would you say what she did, was it usual or unusual? It was unusual during that time, but it was usual for Jesus. It was, un- you know, because during that time, they wasn't used to that type of oil being placed on the bodies. Mm-hmm. But it mm-hmm. was usual to the Lord because she was doing a good deed. Mm-hmm. So it was usual. Mm. You you know, I'm going to I agree with you. I'm going to say it was unusual for the woman. To pour the oil on Jesus. That's what caught right. my attention. That was because, see, the women weren't supposed to make no contact with the men. You know, remember the woman at the well and the disciples came and said, yeah. hey, what you doing talking to that woman? You're not supposed to be with talking to that woman. Mm-hmm. See, that was unusual for this lady to have this expensive oil. And what did she do with this mm-hmm. oil? She anointed who? Jesus? Jesus. But get this, though. Remember what we said earlier in the Old Testament? The anointing was used on the priests, on the priests. But Jesus, uh, well, also on the on the kings too. The kings was anointed because uh, da- uh, uh, Samuel anointed David when he became um, king. So the prop, uh, the kings and the priests were anointed. What I love about this though, this woman, she anointed Jesus and he was three in one. He's the prophet. He's the priest and he's the king. And this woman, this, no name. Did you notice the text didn't give no name? A unnamed woman anointed the son yes. of God, not an angel, the son of God that that scripture told us about in Hebrews. So now not only did God anointed Jesus, now you got a woman that's anointed Jesus in the physical. See, God anointed Jesus in the spirit with the oil of gladness. But here comes a woman anointing his body for burial. That's physical anointing. But God will give you a spiritual. Oh, this is good. This is an eye yeah. opener. Talk yeah. about the light bulb going on. Oh, I'm like you, Sister LaSun. Don't yeah. turn it off. Don't turn. This is good teaching <laughs> right here. This woman, yes. a no name woman. <laughs> Anointing this, and the men are mad at him. You mad at him? And yeah. just, what you, he said, You should have been doing it. Come on now. Right. 
you trying to kill me. You should have, uh, well, the disciples didn't try to kill him. Well, Judas did. He eventually betrayed him. And so here it is. But look what Jesus said about this unnamed woman that did this unusual anointing on the son of God. He said, you know what? Oh, I love verse nine. He said, you know what? He says, wherever this gospel is preached, you know what she did, how she anointed him. He says, it's going to be preached where? In the whole world. He yeah. said, I'm going to tell you right now, this woman, what she did, it's going to be a memorial and it's going to be told. It's going to be told as a memorial for her. You know, it's true because you and me right. talking about it right now. We still That's talking about right. that woman. Oh, can I get an amen? Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> Are you seeing this couple? Are you yes. seeing how this couple, see, they belong together. It's usual. It's usual yes. for oil and anointing, whether it's in the spirit or in the physical. Baby, this is a good couple. You're right. It's a Amen. good couple. <laughs> Woo. My, I love it. Look at here. <laughs> if, if I was living back in that time, I think me and that woman, I would I, I would probably have to uh, go down and fight her. No, no, girl, let me let me anoint it. Let, nah, what is the girl who probably would have had a cat fight? Who going to anoint Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> you know, both of you can do it. Okay. I would have said, let me share this with you. Let me share this moment with you. Girl, look at here. You know how they saying is, they say there, there's like 10 women to one man. Girl, with Jesus, you got a million women to that one man. Come on, now. everybody yeah, want to know yeah. Jesus. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> oh. Yeah. All right, Sister Lasagna, let's take a look at our very last scripture. And we're going to now take everyone. Let's go to James, everyone. Take a look on the screen. We're going to take a look at James chapter five. Sister Lasagna, I want you to read verse 13 and 14. Okay. Thirteen and fourteen. Yes. And it reads. Let me go back to where I was. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is anyone among you suffering? That's a question. Mm -hmm. Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing songs. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So here we have again, mm -hmm. we have the sickness, the cheerful, we we call upon the Lord and let them him anoint us with gladness, with whatever he like, whatever he feel like anointing us with. But if you sick, the Lord will anoint you. Call on him. Amen. So, Sister Lasagna, would you say what you just read in that scripture? Would you say what James is describing to us? Because remember, we learned this last week as well. This, this is Jesus' half-brother. So now this is James telling us something about this couple. And what did and what James said about this couple, is it usual or unusual? It's usual. Yeah. Because we still do it today. We talked about that earlier, what people do in the church. You go to the church, they bring out the bottle of oil, and they would come up, line up. They tell you to line up. You even said yes. next time you go to church, you say, I'm getting up in line. You're going to get my anointing. <laughs> come on now. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> you seeing this? Yes. So we still do it today. So this couple yes. ain't divorced. It ain't separated. You can't break it up. No. You, I don't care what the enemy try to do. You cannot divorce this couple because they're usual. They belong together. Amen. Yes. Are you seeing that? Yes. Woo. But sometimes you got to be careful in some of these churches because I went to one of them. And girl, they, they, you know, they put the oil on you and then they want to try to push you down. No, I ain't falling down. No, I don't want to fall down. You know, that uh, Benny Hinn is good for that. The Benny Hinn, you know how he slapped that oil on people and he walked by pushing them down. They yeah. falling down and push them and they falling right. down. Really, that's all entertainment. You ain't got to do all that. Mm -hmm. You don't need to do all that. I know. 
You don't need to talk yeah. Put the oil on my head yeah. and, and, and let me receive it. If it's true, if it's real, if it's a real anointing, I, then I would I would have some kind of uh, effect behind it. But if it ain't a real exactly. anointing, you ain't gonna it ain't, it ain't gonna move nothing. Ain't that gonna happen? Right. He having all those people send all that money because uh-huh. they they think that they have been set apart. Uh huh. And uh-huh. it's so sad, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sister Lasagna, that's going to end our lesson for today. Share with us, what did you learn on episode number 41 as we talked about this couple today called Oil and Anointed? What did you learn, my sister? I learned that the sinful natures of the Israelites, they were continuously sinning and the Lord, he really wanted to have a relationship with them. He really wanted to be in their presence and wanted them to be in his presence. Mm-hmm. And he had to figure out a way. I don't, th- I think he already figured it out, but he had to let us know what we should do so we can earn our way back to him. So what he did was all these rituals, uh, this, this, the killing of the lamb, the killing of the bull, the incense, the aroma. He had all these rituals for them to come back, things that were pleasing to him. It wasn't about us. We didn't understand it. And I, you know, I, I wouldn't, uh, if I didn't read it today, I wouldn't understand. But this is what he wants. And why not do it? So he put people in place mm-hmm. to let them know. He didn't come directly to them. He put the Levites and Aaron, his son, he put people in place to give instructions to his people. He All he wanted to do was love us, and he wanted us to love him. So all this was created for them to love him. That's all I have. Amen. Praise God. But thank you so much, Sister Lasagna, for your summation of this lesson today. And the main focus that you spoke on there was God's what? Love. His love. And so with the rituals and the ceremonies and everything, all of that with the priests had to do, that we saw all of that entangle one word, love. All right, then. So thank you, everyone, for joining Sister Lasagna and I here on this lesson today. Hey, listen, Minister Love, want to remind everyone, hey, listen, this ain't the only lesson that we bring to you on this week. We want you to go over to our uh, YouTube channel where you're watching this show right here at My Bible Study Show and watch episode number 41 where we are fishermen of men and we caught us any man. Yeah, that's why we just went out and called us any man. So you don't want to miss that teaching series as well. We got some great scriptures for you over there as well. And then also at uh, my Bible study show, we're doing a wonderful series, verse number 41. We're doing a series called Biden versus Trump. And it ain't the the, uh, the regular way that you think, you know, a drag down, knock down, fight. No, this is totally different. We went and got some scriptures out of Proverbs and uh, Psalms. And so we're seeing how these scriptures, how they fit these individuals. And we're calling out everyone. If you're going to vote this coming election, it should be a moral vote. So look at the character. So we're going to have uh, Biden versus Trump. Read the scripture, Proverbs 26, 12. You want, you read that scripture and you're going to say, uh, this is Trump. And this is Biden because they're versing one another. Let the Bible be your moral majority vote. Amen. So it's a great series. Had a Amen. fun doing it. And we hope you enjoy watching it as well. And then we're not done with you. I tell you, this week is awesome. You can catch also episode, uh, Diagnosis number 41 on my other YouTube channel called the Sister Love Talk Show. Oh my God, this is a great teaching. This one is called Mental Issues and it ain't the regular mental issues that you may be thinking about. You know, like schizophrenia, bipolar, you know how people have mental issues and they get depressed. Not those kind. Mm -mm. Check out diagnosis number 41, judgment. So that's what we're doing. Mental issues and every diagnosis, the word is going to end in mint. So check it out, judgment. 
that's a mental issue. All right, then, everyone. We love you. And thank you for uh, being right here uh, with us. And uh, we would look forward to you coming back uh, with Sister Lasagna and I next week on another great lesson. Our last lesson on episode number 42. You don't want to miss us right here at My Bible Study Show, where we're talking about uh, couples in my Bible. Well, Sister Lasagna, God bless you, love you, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Anything you want to say before we end the show? I love this one. I love this lesson, and I just can't wait until next year. So <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> they stay tuned. All right, then. God bless you. And I'm Minister Love with Sister Lasagna, everyone. Take care, and we'll see you next week. God bless. Amen.